So we could have done a full review of the LG G8, but the reality of it is that most phones are pretty much the same thing other than a couple of key gimmicks these days anyway. So we figured, what the hey, why don't we just do a phone gimmick video instead? Focusing on, of course, the big gimmick of the G8, the rear fingerprint sensor. <laughs> just kidding. That was what, the G2? Anyway, no the screen that actually vibrates to make forward-facing sound. Yes, my friends, there's no speaker on the Wait, front of the phone. Wait, you think that's the biggest gimmick? There's yeah. more, it gets way gimmickier than that. And stay tuned and you'll find out just how. After this message from our sponsor, FreshBooks. FreshBooks accounting software is custom built for how you want to work, helping you stay organized and productive. Try their 30-day free trial for free at the link in the video description. So do you want to show off the weird vibrating screen speaker first or the hand unlock first? I want to do the vibrating screen first. When you heard that this phone had that feature, did you assume that it had no other speakers and no other holes? I did and then I got really confused because as soon as I sat here and you put it on the table, I was like, whoa, hold on a second. It's got speaker holes in the bottom. And making matters even more confusing, it doesn't even seem like it's a good speaker solution because it's the old fashioned fire into your palm and you know curve your palm real nice so you can actually hear anything thing like there's actually no speaker at the top the exciter is right about here kind of right where that google search bar is it is meant to be a top speaker even though it does kind of shake the whole screen let's put some sound on you can you might be able to hear that it's louder at the top than the bottom i would say the stereo effect on this is far less convincing than even like a really a really small amplified earpiece speaker like what I've got on the Note 9. Um, it's, you, you can really tell like where it's coming from and it's, especially because you've got that downward firing one into your hand, it's like kind of out here. Yes. And then this one is like here. So it's almost like a weird offset. Like if you were to take your projector screen and put one of your speakers well behind it and then one of them way over on the side, like it's not a proper stereo effect and it's really quiet. The other issue here is that this phone just doesn't sound very good. I'm at only 70, 80% right now and there's clear distortion. Riley, do you want to explain what a power bottom is? Okay, compare that to a Pixel 3 that has dual front firing speakers in stereo. Do you want to explain what a power bottom is? Yeah, like it crushes it. You wanna explain what a power bottom is? But I bet you can go higher without distortion. This dude a looks bit. like a used toilet brush. A little bit. Okay, hold on. Let me crank this though. Bottom was top energy. Ooh. It's ugly. The phone really vibrates noticeably in your hand. So what I'm trying to figure out though is whether that's from the vibrating screen aspect or if it's from the boombox speaker thing. So the G7, the phone that came before this, had these boombox speakers, so they actually utilized some of the space of the phone as an acoustic resonance chamber for the speaker. So they actually hollowed out some aspect of this. And that vibrated your hand on the G7, even though there was no vibrating screen. It's actually kind of unpleasant. And it's really unfortunate because my first impressions of the G8 are honestly really good. Like, I like the really natural curve they've got for the glass back here. I re really like the rounded corners down here. It fits nicely in the hand. It's not gigantic, so if you're the kind of person who doesn't want, like, a freaking tablet in your pocket, then it's it's actually, like, it's still one-handable, you know? Like, I can actually type on this with one hand. It's got glass on the sides now. And look what they did. This is an even improvement compared to the G7, is they managed to have no more bump, no camera bump at all. Oh, it felt really sleek, but I couldn't put my finger on why. Oh, okay. Well, now we gotta try a phone call then. Yes, because there's another aspect that is potentially awesome, which is it's somewhere between speaker and bone conduction mm. speaker. Apparently they say if you're in a noisy environment, you can just put it closer to your jaw and you can hear better than you can with a normal phone. Okay, so we figure what better way to create a noisy environment than to just crank something on our uh, brand new, okay, it's not all set up, but it should still make noise, home theater setup. Is it still a home theater if it's at work? So this is bizarre. 
I can hold my phone right here like some kind of freaking moron and I can still hear him just fine. That's pretty cool. All right, now let's introduce some noise pollution. Where about say you're going in Hawaii? Cool, okay, come on back in. So that's impressive. I actually wasn't that convinced. Again, while I was trying to hold the phone to my ear at the top, like I would be in the habit of doing, but then once I actually put my ear sound absorption hole right here, where the actual exciter is, I was able to, even after he turned it back up, I was able to hear you quite clearly. So are you saying that it's not great for consuming content, but actually yeah. for calls, it's pretty sweet? Actually, yeah, I'd, I'd say that's, that's really fair. If you actually take a lot of phone calls in crowded environments, because you could hear me pretty well too, right? Yeah. That's yeah. impressive. I was literally standing next to speakers with obnoxious music, like the epitome of obnoxious music playing. So I think as long as you have the right expectations, then you might be impressed with this. Because I thought it was going to be awesome sound and no speakers. And That's what I thought based on the TV demos. And that's not even the most gimmicky gimmick though. Right. They claim that you can unlock the phone with your palm. Like with my Palm Pilot? I can remote into it and unlock it? Uh, does anyone even get <laughs> Who's going to get that? No one. <laughs> Some people. So they put one of those time of flight sensors on the front of this which yeah. is what Face ID is all about. And this yeah. does have face unlock, which is sweet. But for some reason, <laughs> the feature you never knew you didn't want, <laughs> you can also use your hand to unlock it. You can now unlock your phone with hand ID. In theory. You did it, you did it. Yeah! Do it again. Okay. I've never got two in a row. Nice. Yeah! Okay, so, it's not fast though. Yeah, an underscreen fingerprint sensor is clearly a better solution. With that said, the OnePlus 6T is fast, but the ultrasonic sensor, wrong phone, not impressive to me so far. Check this out. It might as well be an iPhone 6. It might as well be a hand unlock. It's our new punchline, isn't it? <laughs> Poor LG. Hand gate. Everything's oh. gate with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> Vibrating screen gate. Okay. okay, so lucky you, it unlocks for you. That's great. Now, that actually has other features that you can do with your hand other than unlocking it. They're called air motion gesture. Sounds terrible. Air motion. Try holding your hand six to 10 centimeters away. Six to 10 centimeters. Sure, let me, let me get that dialed right in for you, okay? Don't pretend like you aren't intimately familiar with that length. Okay. See, uh, the, see that green bar that came up? Yeah. Okay, now move your hand 20 centimeters away. Okay, now you're supposed to be able to like swipe to start an app or pinch for pinch for a screenshot, like, the, like a duck. But it's supposed to be giving you a preview where it kind of images your hand and you can see what your hand's doing but it's not even giving me the preview anymore. Wait, why isn't the preview coming up if the bar is coming up? Okay, I can't take this anymore. It like a psychic and then the last unusual feature is that portrait mode, now instead of just having stills capture and the ability to change your background blur, let me just blur you some more here. Now it also has video mode. Yeah, this is not good. Like you add some Twitter compression to this and you are looking at a pretty bad time. It's almost a shame that those gimmicky features suck because underneath all that, 
is like a pretty decent phone. Yeah, Snapdragon 855, six gigs RAM, 128 gigs ROM. There's just the one SKU. It's got IP68 water resistance. It's got a headphone jack, including LG's whole 32-bit uh, hi-fi quad DAC thing. They've actually got a pretty good reputation for their analog sound output. It's got USB type C. 3,500 like, milliamp hour battery. There's actually not a lot to complain about here. 6.1 inch display. It's just like, it feels like the same thing I've been saying for the last, I don't know, five years, eight years, however long it's been about these, um, about phones really. is like, yeah, it's like pretty good, except that they try to write their own software instead of just using Android. And they apparently do that so that they can build in these weird features that mostly don't work. The speaker, I mean, it's not better than a phone that, you know, just has a, uh, a single bottom firing speaker, but that was the norm not that long ago. And it has the benefit of being able to use it in a crowded environment and not have to like fuss around with, you know, holding your phone in exactly the right spot. So that's pretty cool. This thing though can just disappear for all I care. I'd recommend it if it wasn't running LG's skin. That will always be a problem for me. It actually looks like they've made a lot of improvements here, to be perfectly honest with you. The icons are not ugly, which is- I don't is... hate LG's skin. It's better than Samsung's, well, the way Samsung's was before. They recently improved it. Also, pricing and availability. This will be out in the next coming weeks, depending on your carrier, for about probably 800 bucks. The G7 was 750. So, it's a flagship. It's not the most expensive phone out there. If it's a good deal on contract with your carrier, Normally these sponsor spots are pretty long, but I'm gonna save you guys some time. Private internet access, PIA VPN, go get it now at the link in the video description. It makes your internet browsing more secure and it's super affordable. Go, 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 go. So thanks for watching guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button, but if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. You know what? I'm willing to give a final answer. I'm nay. I'm really sold on the bigger screen phones now. Oh, hold on a sec. There you go. I, I couldn't hear you. Let me get my crotch closer. What'd you say? But James likes it. So uh, while you're down there, you can also check out our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one. And, and this one. Our community forum. Yes, it does have shirts like that one. It doesn't come with the pecs, though. Mm. Dance. Dance, pecs. <laughs>